Hello everyone. I'm here to talk about the full moon, I almost said new moon, full moon in Sagittarius tomorrow morning. And there is a lot to cover. Um, so bear with me. Um, I was reminded to look back at the new moon uh, back in December the new moon in Sagittarius and I may have to repost that reading because it was like insane uh space weather like there was so much happening in the sky and there were so many synchronicities linked to myth and um one thing I'll reference again that came up in that reading that I find really interesting is that uh the asteroid Leona was passing through Betelgeuse's um, Betelgeuse is the star of Orion, which is in Orion's right shoulder. So there was this lioness energy while we have this Leo meta goddess, uh, Venus cycle happening. And it feels like this, um, it felt like a, a healing of the sacred masculine. And so we could have been setting an intention, you know, for that kind of healing to happen, or there could have been a beginning of, uh, sacred masculine healing, that could help us really protect protect our true voice and like and really stand in our own light if that makes sense and i feel echoes of that with this full moon as we have jupiter and venus as well as sedna um conjunct jupiter and venus are at 29 degrees taurus and sedna is at zero gemini um so it feels like and Venus is about to be in the underworld as well. So it feels like a time to release. I'm getting this feeling of like um, forgiving, like th this forgiveness that needs to happen. Because what came up, I love that this is on the top of my deck. I probably haven't pulled this deck out since that last reading. I can't believe this. Uh, this was just right where I needed it. So this is Orion this old strength card from the Visconti, uh, Visconti Sforza deck. And what I was feeling before was this healing from dominating, you know, like when you look at the Rider weight strength card, it's this, it's more feminine. There's a woman feeding the lion a pill and it's more of this like, um, harmony with our, more instinctive self or our our quote unquote lower nature where this is like this violent domination of it you know um and so something else that came up around this full moon is uh the french revolution actually um so the way that <laughs> the way that this came up was i was looking at the sabian symbols um, so the Sabian symbol for the moon at three degrees Sagittarius is two men playing chess, choosing the optimal path with a hopeful expectation, which feels like the um, chariot card to me. Um, and then the sun Sabian symbol is at three degrees Gemini because at a full during a full moon, we have the sun opposite the moon. And so this is the light that's being reflected by this moon. And it's the Garden of the Tuileries. The, so this is, um, I had to look up what the Tuileries was. It was a palace in Paris that was actually burnt down. And the only thing left is the gardens. Uh, it's next to the Louvre. And this wasn't directly related to the French Revolution, but it happened with the same themes in mind where there's like um, imbalance is really what it was because you had the this like aristocracy, you had the elite, and then you had people that were really struggling. And um, there was a lot of resentment, you know, between the people who were struggling and the people who were in power and who were flourishing. So when I started looking at the French Revolution, I also realized how violent of a movement that was. And um, it feels like there's this this returning of a cycle, like an echoing of a cycle that's asking us to find more balance between like Gemini and Sagittarius. So Gemini can get, can if you get too much into the like the mental energy of Gemini and being completely objective, you can get yourself into trouble. 
the same as if you get way too like airy fairy with Sagittarius or like stuck in your views, that's not good either. So um, it's really about finding the balance between the two and following this French Revolution was also the Age of Enlightenment, which I find so funny that it was called the Age of Enlightenment because it wasn't about spirituality really. It was more about materialism and um, the development of science, which had its its pros for sure and its cons as well, just as, as every movement does. So what we see with the Age of Enlightenment and the French Revolution is we kind of see like this radical left um, wanting like everybody to be completely equal. And what's interesting as well is that Pluto was in Aquarius during the French Revolution. So to me, that is sort of a shadow aspect of Aquarius. Aquarius is all about the people, but we also kind of need the nuance that exists in nature. You know, you have um, the differences between flowers, grass, trees. I mean, everybody's different. You know, it's like the same doesn't work for everybody. So here we go with the eternal struggle of how do we have government? How do we govern the people? And I really feel that things would organically um, shift if we all could get a little better at governing ourselves first. Um, but a lot of people, you know, there's there's a lot of people who maybe are not even conscious of that possibility or, or don't want to take responsibility for... Um, the, their life, you know, like they want somebody else to do it for them. So <clears throat> we have to find a balance because we need communi community, we need collaboration, we need each other, but then we also need to have responsibility for the self. So what I'm feeling, it's so hard not to get way, way off on this reading because it even... I'll, I'll revisit this. There's some things coming up in the future that I'm also being shown uh, that this full moon will will relate to. But um, for a second, I kind of want to come back to the microcosm. So we'll come back to this releasing of uh, victim stories. So I think that a lot of resentment has build, built up over the past four years about the people in charge or the people behind the scenes and things like that. And um, I think that the opportunity is for us to see, like, again, I'll say, how do, how do we govern ourselves? And like, I think there's so much power in taking that back, like how you live your own life. And maybe we're handing over too much power to the powers that be or the powers that were, the ones that um, seem to be destroying themselves. But um, here I go again. I feel like I'm getting a really big picture. It's so it's so hard for me with Sagittarius in my ninth house. Um, so maybe I'll actually pull I'll pull a card really quick to see what is on offer for us here. Uh, more like personally with this full moon. What are we releasing? Because full moons are about release, illumination, and release illuminating um it can be illuminating shadows it can be epiphanies it can be creative ideas so what is being illuminated and released oh love interesting okay so i'm gonna say love is being illuminated i wouldn't say we're releasing love let me ask again what are we releasing here abundance okay jupiter and venus conjunct which is opposing this new moon really inviting us to lean into love and abundance and i guess i'm feeling the release of uh fear the release of lack the release of um feeling these like this separation if that makes sense. So one of the things that came up um, with this full moon as well is how fire 
you know, Sagittarius is a fire sign. Fire can either create or destroy. I was thinking of this with that garden, um, how there, the palace was burnt down and all that was left was the gardens. And that's what was so interesting too. Like there's all of the, the symbolism where I'm like tempted to be like, yeah, like burn down the palace, take down the tower. But I think that's what we're being asked to sort of step out of, to, to take the higher road um, from, you know, like seeking vengeance and, and things like that. Which I guess, in a way, Sagittarius is a good sign for that because they're more of the philosopher and seeing things from a higher perspective, you know? Um, the other thing that I was being clued into for the future were, was um, the debates. So three days, I think, after this full moon, um, Jupiter moves into Gemini. And this is really interesting because Jupiter is like... Gemini's opposite sign. Jupiter rules Sagittarius, but I feel that this is going to help open a lot of people's minds. Um, and it's interesting because uh, there's been talk that perhaps RFK will be allowed to be in the debates with Trump and Biden. And for a while, I thought there weren't even going to be any debates <laughs> is what it seemed like. Um, and I'm not super political, but I'm, I'm being pointed towards this stuff right now. So um, we have the first debate on June 27th, and there's a lot of water energy on that debate. It feels like it's going to be confusing. It feels like it's going to be very reactive. Uh, delusional. There's like a lot of Pisces and Cancer energy going on. And I'm really interested to see how that comes out. Um, then September 10th, it feels like things are going to heat up majorly. Uh, we've got the sun conjunct the asteroid Atlantis in Virgo, opposing Saturn and Pisces, squaring the moon and Jupiter in Gemini. Um, and Jupiter is going to be opposing the moon again. And I also feel like I was looking up, like, um, I think it was when that palace was burnt down. Yeah, Jupiter was conjunct the sun in Gemini. So we have some echoes of that time. But um, we're also going to see Mercury in Virgo. And so... It feels like this full moon is asking us to release the beliefs that we've had and open our minds a little more to new ideas and um, also philosophizing a little more. Like perhaps this Jupiter energy in Gemini will help balance that like reason versus spirit, you know, like reason versus spirituality. Um, so I would love to come back at some point if I can, if I can muster up the energy and time to look at the candidates charts, to look at the U.S. chart and look at all of it in relation to the debates and the election. Um, I didn't look ahead at the election because I, I, I just wasn't drawn to that. But the other interesting thing about the September 10th debate is that Pluto is going to be back in Capricorn again. So we're returning back to the that kind of like old school shadow. And there's so much more tension in the chart then. I will say the first one on June 27th is very, as I said, it's very watery. But there's actually like a lot of harmony uh, between the water and the chart. So I'm just interested to see how each of those go. But um, yeah, I'm going to pull a few cards just to end this. So... This is my Tree of Life Oracle, and I want to ask for a card for this full moon in Sagittarius. Ooh, I love this. This reminds me of the Strength card. Um, Tifereth, Beauty, Balance, Sacrifice, and Joy. And I love how this child's just basking in the sun. And it kind of actually, is, it's such a good uh, juxtaposition to this, <laughs> isn't it? It's like, how can we heal that, that little boy <laughs> inside of us? Um, and then I was 
called to look at the Avalon card because of course all this political stuff brings up like King Arthur and the round table. So um, I'm trying to think of what I want to ask about. Yeah, what would, what are we looking at for these debates actually I'm going to ask. I don't know why I'm being taken there so strongly, but I guess it's kind of been a topic recently out there. What can we expect with these debates? Ooh, fairy. Interesting. Guardians, protection, playfulness, nature's magic. Hmm. It kind of feels like, um, I don't know, this is, I kind of feel this energy of like being and just watching, just like being an outsider and seeing what can happen. And I also feel like we're sort of being asked to not, not give up on magical possibilities, um, that things could be different. I have to say that I've been surprised by, <clears throat> how much progress RFK has made because I really thought he had like it's I really like him personally but I really thought he had like no chance and it seems like he's gaining a lot of popularity and actually making his way into mainstream media again um which is kind of cool uh so as for one more from this deck I'm bringing out some weird decks today guys like I never used this Splendor Solace Tarot, but it was calling my name. And I think it was William Blake, actually. I feel like it was a little bit of his influence, which I'll come back to in a second. Um, Sagittarius Full Moon. Ooh, Venus of Living Fire. Alchemy of the Seven of Wands. Okay, I'm going to have to read about this because... This is why I don't usually bring this deck out because I'm not super familiar with it um, or the tarot. I would love to learn it, but it's that's one I just haven't haven't gotten really familiar with yet. Um, I come that courage and vision delight a new awareness of how to succeed in all circumstances. As ambassador, I bear goodwill from fire's loving victory. The seventh fire, we bring into being the bright Venus sphere of Mithraela's high heavens. From the heart's center, power descends with mercy and grace to house divine passion, zeal, and vitality. Within the spirit substance dwells many rayed light, archetype deity known by many names, goddess Nike, the winged victory, peaceful ruler of hosts, golden Astarte, Aphrodite. Dear alchemist, live within the vibrant sevenfold awareness. Seek communion with many rayed light. Join the exaltations of Venus inspired mysteries, Orphic, Eleusinian, Dionysian, that the vision of beauty triumphant grows strong. My alchemy of the seventh fire gathers into the vessel all distrust, poor compromise, quarrel, and threat. Our arts dissolve and transform these with tincture of amber. Distortions of velour are reformed into honor. Oh, distortions. Wait, our arts dissolve and transform these with a tincture of amber. Distortions of valor are reformed into honor, influence, and joyful enthusiasms. Goddess Venus sets initiatory tasks for the psyche soul, leading from false light to the eternal lamp of truth. Learn that practice of intensity. Let your own psyche grow to full partnership with immortal love. Ooh, I like that. I like that energy. And that feels very William Blake. So he came up in my consciousness. And it turns out he is a Sagittarius sun, which is interesting. And I actually happen to have some of his works um, in this 18th century poetry and prose book that popped off a shelf at me at a restore. <laughs> And I remembered this poem that I think is so interesting. I just wanted to read it. It's pretty short. And um, I want to know if you got what your guys' insights are on this. But I, I just kind of like it. Uh, and I don't even fully, I have to say, I don't even fully understand 
his references. I think I understand his references at the end, but anyway, here it goes. It's called Mock On, Mock On Voltaire Rousseau, which is, um, you know, hearkening back to the, the Age of Enlightenment. And he was actually, I have to say, uh, William Blake was a proponent of the French Revolution, but not so much the Enlightenment or the Age of Reason movement. So, mock on, mock on, Voltaire Rousseau, mock on, mock on, tis all in vain. You throw the sand against the wind, and the wind blows it back again. And every sand becomes a gem reflected in the beams divine. Blown back by, blown back they blind the mocking eye, but still in Israel's past they shine. The atoms of Democritus and Newton's particles of light are sands upon the red seashore where Israel's tents do shine so bright. And the, the references to, I mean, I love like how the, these guys of reason are being mocked by the beauty of nature, first of all, and like divinity. But then his, um, his references to Israel are interesting. And I'm wondering if it's like a, a Christian or biblical reference um because he did seem to be christian but he wasn't orthodox christian he he was very much supportive of having pleasure in life like sexual pleasure like he had that divine feminine connection so just an interesting character that i feel like wanted to pop through on this uh sagittarius full moon so um yeah really hard for me to get down to the microcosm on this one guys um I think for myself, I'm just trying to lighten up, you know, not take things so seriously, uh, which feels very much in the spirit of Sagittarius. So uh, let me know how you're feeling this full moon and I hope it's a good one. All right. Love you guys.